Part of the Rick Eruption, I'm Jared Ware, and we're getting a PTRM before the blizzard of 78 hits here in 2013. Part of the Rick Eruption, I'm Dan Charis. What better way to spend the day in the snow than watching some Part of the Rick Eruption? Get yourself a nice little hot cocoa, maybe put some extra marshmallows in there, drink that. Maybe throw Watch a little... PTR. Throw a little... Don't show them. A little nip in there, in the hot chocolate. Well, yeah. yeah. Get you feeling good. Yeah. Get you excited. So we got 10 topics here today, as always. Throughout the world of sports, we're going national, international, Super Bowl, all sorts of stuff. And uh, also, if you want to join the debate at home, hashtag Big, big Bad Voodoo Daddy. That's the, uh, that's the hashtag to use. Why don't you say it? It's fun to say. Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Hashtag, daddy hashtag, <laughs> hashtag Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. So Mr. Let's get, pinstripe Suit. Let's get right into it. Sam and Matt, as our producers today, what do we got for top They were on the kiss cam yesterday. I don't know if you saw that. I did. So, first topic, where does the Super Bowl rank all time? We were watching this game together. Third quarter comes around, power outage. We're going, this game is awful. Let's leave. By the time we got home, things had heated up, totally changed. Where do you have it in your Super Bowl rankings? First of all, remind me to tell you of a great Harlan call on the radio yeah. from that drive. I, uh, so, all right. So, uh, the first Super Bowl, I remember Super Bowl 31. I was uh, six years old, maybe. Patriots were playing the Packers. So, I'm going to go from there because that's the only one I remember. Yeah. I'll eliminate all the Patriots Super Bowls. Because I'm a Patriots fan, and yep. those are probably my top three and least favorite. The two least favorite, yeah. So I think this one is it's very good. We've got some great games over yep. the last few years, competitive games. Yep. But it's not my favorite Super Bowl of all time. My favorite one was, obviously besides the Patriots, was when the Colts lost to the Saints. Okay. 31 to 17, yep. Super yep. Bowl 44. I was, I guess... I was, I'm not a huge Saints fan, but I was jumping on that bandwagon at that point because yep. the Pats had been eliminated. The Colts, obviously, it was Manning versus Brady at that point. Yep. Manning could like surpass Brady of greatness, yep. even though he only had two Super Bowls if he won that compared to three for Brady. So that was my favorite because Manning threw that pick to Tracy Porter. And then he, he had to see Manning run and try to tackle him, but some defensive lineman just shoved him right out of the yep. way. It was just great. And uh, also, the, the two plays that stand out in that game, the onside kick to start the second half, Brilliant move. Yep. Pink basket, you got to catch that. And then uh, the Lance Moore two-point conversion. I told you this the other day when we were doing our live WXM broadcast. One of the most underrated catches in all of the NFL's history yep. was that Lance Moore two-point conversion. I, I just went on a big-time rant. I got to go Titans-Rams. That was a fantastic game. It kind of gets lost in the mix. has one of the great sort of uh, moments in Super Bowl history. Kevin Dyson coming up short, getting tackled, stretching. That's, that's one of the great images of Super Bowl history. Mm. Plus that playoff run, you had the Music City Miracle with the Titans, which is one of the greatest playoff plays of maybe all time. One of the, I, I like it. I think it's the best catchy name. Music City Miracle really works. Frank Wycheck. Buffalo Bills lost that game. I think that's the last time the Bills were yeah. in the playoffs, yep. which is a little fun. Quarterback for controversy. You. Foodie started the whole season. They put in Rob Johnson. Yep. Steve McNair on that team. Quarterback Air. in that squad. Uh, expansion team, not really an expansion team at the time, but they moved from Houston, so they were kind of the team to like if you were, you know, if you were an NFL fan, you were really rooting for them in that game. But the Rams, that kind of started their di di uh, dynasty and dynasty. boosted Marshall. Well, not dynasty, but that period of dominance. Even though they only won that Super Bowl, but they had really launched them from okay. average team to one of the better teams in the NFL for a yeah. few years, and then it exploded the careers of like a guy like Marshall Falk, Kurt Warner, those guys yep. went from. Just guys in the NFL, too. All of a sudden, Marshall Fox is a great player, even though he was tremendous in Indianapolis before that. And Kurt Warner became a pretty good quarterback. So, yeah. great Super Bowl. Watch that one. Probably the first one I got to stay Not the first one I got to stay up for, because I did get to stay up for that Packers-Pats Packers, Packers uh, Pats game. But I was super young. I don't remember any place from that game whatsoever. Yeah, so. that was the first Super Bowl I stayed up for the whole thing, Super Bowl 34. So, let's go to top number two. All right, so the final play, the game... When the Niners had the ball, it was that fourth and five from the fourth and goal from the five yard line? Yeah. Rush comes in. You could have maybe said offsides there. Yeah. But Colin Kaepernick has to throw it up. Was clearly getting held past five yards by Jimmy Smith. Should the refs have thrown the yellow flag? It's a tough situation to throw a flag, but in my opinion, that was a holding. And I saw someone on Twitter put, if that was a Pats defensive back, the flag would have came out so quick it would make your head spin. You know, how many times did we see that exact play? From a guy like, from a guy like Kyle Arrington or Devin McCourty, and we see a flag, and it's like, okay, our the cornerbacks are awful. That, to me, and I've only saw it that one the time they showed it live in the replays during the game. I haven't watched it since. Looked like a hold to me. The ball landed out of bounds, but it wasn't like 20 yards out of bounds. If you would have gotten a good jump, 
Probably could have caught that. Would have been close if he would have came in inbounds, but I think you got to throw the flag there. It would have been tough on the Ravens, but you got to D him up properly. So I'm saying it was a holding. It was clo- It was really close, but I'd say holding. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you because I thought the ball was too far out of bounds. I just, it was un- it, he maybe could have caught it, but I don't think he would have got I two think he could. I think he could have. I don't think he could have. So I, th- I agree with the ref's decision. Like I like to let him play the further you get into the playoff situation. Even Wait. though, I mean, you got to abide yeah. by the rules, but still, I think it was out of bounds, and maybe he should block somebody, and Cra- uh, Kaepernick could have had more time to throw the ball, and that would have been... Well, that happen. was the play. That was that looked like what and they were going does, for the entire it, time, which is, it's a stupid it fourth looks, and five yeah, call. Really, it's really an awful, awful, awful play call, but he got mugged. He, he, he got... The two hands were grabbing him. It wasn't... It wasn't... If, if I would said he just had one hand, maybe that left hand was grabbing but he had left, right, right on his hips, so... It's tough. The more Phil Sims saw it, the more he was confused. Phil Sims is always confused. The more he watches football, the less he knows about the sport is what it seems like. Heard some rumors. I read on, um, I think, it was some the Sherman Report, CBS considering getting rid of him, but by the time they get to Super Bowl, the next go-around, yeah. so we might see a new guy with CBS. Dean Dorf is the number two right who now. Is there, who is his, uh, the Sherman Report's number one target to replace him? Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. <laughs> Topic number three. Super Bowl 41 MVP himself. That would be great. They would be a great tandem. It would be good. Because looking at his chops for oh, Peyton it'd be, Manning. It would be move. fantastic. Love Peyton Manning as a character. So, we talked about the holding. We saw the reaction from Jim Harbaugh. You get a little picture of it right there. Yeah, guy I went see. nuts, which Vocal. is not the first time we've seen him go nuts and lose his mind. We saw his brother yell at the guy who was just telling him the situation with the power yeah, outage. Yeah. He freaked out. So, the two of them can, can throw a, you know, a hissy fit. But, is Jim Harbaugh the biggest crybaby head coach of all time? <laughs> That picture's just great. <laughs> yeah, that, and that was like for 45 that, yeah, seconds. Yeah, that was 45 for a good seconds while. to a minute. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, I'm trying to think. He seems like the biggest crybaby right now in professional sports. Yeah, his brother's it's got to be number two. Uh, I was trying to think. There's got to be some diva soccer coach somewhere in the world that tops Jim Harbaugh, but I can't think of him at the moment. So I'm going to stick local here, stick Division three. Stick to a rival at Rhode Island College. I'm going to go Keene State's basketball <laughs> coach. Uh, I believe his name is Rob Colbert. Yep, yep. I only saw the guy one game. Threw a water bottle onto the court. <laughs> yeah. Somehow the refs didn't see it. Yep. Got a technical. Guy was flipping out all game. Yep. Didn't get a technical. Yep. Somehow didn't get a technical You all could game. go the women's coach, Keith Boucher, is pretty close as well. Uh, he's the, just The one time bad. I saw Keith Boucher, he, was, he, he, kept his, uh, he kept his attitudes in check. So I'm going. This guy is from uh, Warwick, Rhode Island, by the way. Yep. Is, uh... Rob Colbert. Rob Colbert. <laughs> that's great how they got two like French names yeah. as uh, the Keene State basketball head coaches. That's that's a good call on Colbert. He could have picked up a T in that game. I thought Boucher, when the, when Keene State was here, could have picked up a T. And I saw him at the end of that Southern Maine game that I was watching online. Also could have picked up a technical this foul is, at the end of that one. Boucher. That's Boucher, the yeah. women's coach. So he's up there. Uh, I got to say, at the moment, yeah, I think he's the biggest cry bait. I No other coach would do that. Obviously, they'd voice their opinion. They'd be upset. Maybe you get the hat throw, the... You get the hat throw, you get the um, the earpiece throw, all that good stuff, but you wouldn't see what he did. He just looks like an idiot most of the time. And then, yeah. Like I said, not the first time he's done that this no, playoffs. He's the, had the two Atlanta Falcons th- throws, yep. throws the headset. He probably have, smashed the thing to, to smithereens. And the thing is, I don't th- I don't remember him ever doing that in college. It was as soon as he got to the NFL, he mm-hmm. just kind of. But at an institution like Stanford, you know, you gotta you gotta present yourself nicely. So that might have been it. You got a short leash in the NH- in the uh, NFL. Yeah. He could have stayed at Stanford probably until he dies. Yeah, probably. All right, so this is one of the, the hot commodity topics in sports right now. We love talking elite quarterbacks. Who is elite? We will tell you whether Joe Flacco is elite. Jared? No, I don't think he's elite. Okay. I think he had a great playoff run. And I think it very similar to Eli Manning's first Super Bowl run where his season was just all right, then he had a great playoff run, won the Super Bowl. Wasn't considered elite then. Then he went to his second Super Bowl, and it was, okay, this guy's pretty elite, even though his numbers are just all right. I don't think Eli Manning has tremendous numbers in the regular season. So, But you win two Super Bowls. You make a couple good throws in those games that are, you know, two of the, maybe the two greatest catches in Super Bowl history. You're going to be elite. So Joe Flacco, at the moment, nice quarterback, had a great playoffs, didn't turn the ball over at all in the playoffs, which yeah. has been his Achilles, here, uh, Achilles heel. But before we start paying them, the same way we play Brady and Manning, which is what his agent wants. How about you have a good regular season as well and maybe lead your team to another deep playoff run, even though he's done that a few times. But I think Flacco, not elite yet. 
just looking at him, you don't think, watching him play, you don't think, yeah, that guy's as good as Brady, Manning, some of those guys. All right, it depends Rogers, personally what your Luck. definition of elite is. No, not Andrew Luck. And I think Luck is better than Flacco. My, my version of elite is pretty much Brady, Rodgers, yep. Peyton Manning. Breeze. So I don't, Did you say Breeze? Uh, I didn't say Breeze, no. I would put Breeze in there. I didn't say him. Yeah, he's well, I know like, you didn't say like him, but I would bottom, put him in that group. Bottom, bottom run. Breeze is elite. Low elite. Low elite. And, uh, What's the difference between low elite highly and elite? Low elite. No, highly you got to have just elite. You can't. What? It, I told you, it depends on your definition of elite. Well, that's an awful definition of elite. Well, it's my definition. Somebody, it's, it's a poor right, one. You don't think Joe Flacco's elite? It's poor. So I, I'm not complaining with you. Okay, so I think Joe Flacco is in that low elite class now. He's got a Super Bowl. He's only so like he's not seven. elite. He's not. He's not high elite. So. Elite is like uh, like uh, right, an fine, echelon fine, fine, by fine. itself, it's, you know? Yeah, all right, fine. These pro elite guys are the elite guys. And yeah. then the Breeze, the Roethlisberger. Next tier. Next okay. next tier. Okay. And, and, we, we, and I'll, that's where I'll, I have him. That's where I have him. So that's I think I he's, you got to put him in that top seven with Eli Breeze, Roethlisberger, because he's got a Super Bowl now. I'd have if to we list. look at it, if we look at it, he's made five straight playoff runs, five yep. victories in all. Oh, every year he's got a victory. Tom Brady wasn't. I'd have the, to the greatest passer yeah. when he was winning Super Bowls, yep. and then when Brady got into the playoffs, what does he do? Slings it all over the field. That's what Joe Flacco did this year. Eleven touchdowns, zero picks. He deserved to be I Super Bowl MVP. I'd have to rank my top ten. He'd be in my top ten, I think, at the moment. Yeah, you got to throw him in the top ten. But There's a lot be, of bad quarterbacks. I think he'd be eight through, maybe eight through ten at the moment. Well, but still, pretty good. You would probably want him on your team over. Twenty other quarterbacks. Yo, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. There's a lot of awful quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah no, bad, there's some bad quarterback play in the NFL. That's that's nothing new. But top ten, top ten. I, I'm, I'm gonna put them at like seven. I, I said I'd have to write, I'd have to list them out, but top ten. I haven't made the list. I do it before every season, but yeah, probably about seventh. Okay, so our next topic. Rob Gronkowski. He's an animal. He's he's yeah. been seen partying again. Should he cool his antics? Should the Patriots be concerned? Nah, I mean, uh, his meathead off antics. <laughs> off, off season, can do what he wants. Hasn't done anything legal. Hasn't gotten into any legal trouble yet, yep. which is better than most guys in the NFL. Not most, but a lot of guys in the NFL who get into legal trouble. So, he, his mom said it, put it perfectly in, her, in the E60 piece on him. He, he would, he's doing what most people in his situation would do: young, rich, high profile, having fun. I think a lot of people would do what he's doing if they were in his shoes. So. I think it's all right. I think eventually he'll grow up a little bit. I don't know how much, but he's a great tight end. What are you going to say? Either you cool your antics or we're going to cut you because you're not yeah. going to cut him, and he's not cooling his antics, so you're going to be all right with him. You knew when you drafted him, and he puts the helmet on like an idiot celebrating on the stage yeah. in the second round what you're getting from this guy. So let's not act like this came out of nowhere. Arizona guy, party school. So I'm fine with it because he comes out in August ready to play unless he gets hurt, which, you know, that's just a freak thing. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with it also because if his play on the field isn't suffering, yeah. why think? why why should the Patriots care? I mean, he gets hurt, and I don't like to use the term injury prone because yeah. it, they're he, fluky yeah, things. Yeah, it's just like it, sometimes you you, you criticize, criticize their toughness yep. when they're in fact being the opposite, tougher going into situations like this. Like Gronkowski always tries for the extra yard. Yep. That's how he got hurt before. Yep. Uh, this was a fluky extra point. Yeah. So. Yeah, as long as he's playing good on the field, who cares what you're doing? Like you said, he's a young guy. A lot of 24-year-old people are going to be going out, dancing. Yeah. May or may not. And he's never come during the season. You know, the only in-season thing was the picture with B.B. Jones, which that is what that is. But you never hear about him dancing and partying mid-season, mm -hmm. playing football. This is the off-season. This is post-Super Bowl. Season's over for everyone. Do what he so wants. In the off season, you know, he can dance. Sometimes he plays wiffle ball in grocery stores. He can dance when he wants, so he can leave his friends behind. Next topic. So yesterday, first round of the hexagonal World Cup qualifying in Concacaf, USA goes down to Honduras, loses two to one after taking a one zero lead. What are your thoughts on the game? My thoughts. I mean, I haven't seen the highlights because this station, BN Sport, yeah, isn't exactly mainstream in America. Yeah. So it's putting it lightly. Yeah. Uh, so you have to do like the live blogs. Yeah. You gotta get the live awful. the live blogs update, which are always pretty terrible. Um, so yeah, my thoughts on the game. I'm upset with the result. Yes. I mean, if they went down there one to one, it happens. Yep. But what is really upsetting is USA scores a goal, and then like three minutes later, Honduras comes back and scores a goal. 
That's what the USA's problem is. Yep. Forever. It doesn't even matter who the coach is. It's first five minutes of the game, they give up an early goal. So they're playing from behind the whole time. Or right after they score, they give up a goal. So, I mean, they've, they've been road-tested, this U.S. squad. They won at Italy. They won at Mexico. And they go, have to go to Honduras, which is a hostile environment. Yep. Um, and then they just they just can't play up to it. And at the end of the game, you give up a goal with, like, 12 minutes left in the game. Yep. That's just... Uh, it's sort of, I want to say like poor management on Klinsman's part because he put out a back yeah. four, never played a World Cup qualifier before, n- yep. not one of them. Yep. It was Gonzalez and Cameron mi- in the mi- uh, middle yep. defense, and then Johnson and Chandler on the ends. So you're pretty much relying on Tim Howard. Yep. And you can't do that all the time because goalies, you know, they can try as good as they can to get a save, and it's just going to go right by them. Yep. Yeah, i got to agree with you. And, and as you mentioned, I think a lot of it has to fall on Klinsman specifically the defensive, the, the defensive his four. Subs, his subs were, uh, like, midfield-minded. Yeah. Like, Maurice Edu was in the game. Now, I think... Uh, now, I like the addition of Gonzalez in, in the lineup in that back four. But I think, as Ian Dark pointed out on Twitter, Jeff Cameron, playing in Stoke, playing at Stoke, playing in England, has been playing a lot of right back. Hasn't played any center back at all since he's moved to England. So, he, just a little rusty in that position. Timmy Chandler just coming back into the U.S. side. Why don't you put Jeff Cameron out at right back? That's a that's a fine position for him. Plus, that gives you a little a, a bigger, stronger body on a tough road game where you're going to have to defend more. You put Boca Negra in as well. You get a veteran leader in the middle of your defense with Gonzalez, two big, strong guys in the middle. I think that would have been a little better than forcing Chandler in and then kicking uh, Cameron inside with Gonzalez, who they barely played together yeah. as a center back player. I think this might have been the first game they've played together yeah. as a center back pairing. So I would have gone Boca Negra, Gonzalez, Cameron, Fabian Johnson, obviously a left back. I think the that's better. going to be for the U.S. squad. I think going defense and and strikers. Which when was the last time a U.S. striker yeah. scored a goal? Yeah, it's sort of part of the formation when they play with one striker, which I've never been a fan of. But you you can't really play on the road with two strikers. You, you gotta you gotta pack the midfield. You probably need yeah. five midfielders in road games. You gotta, if you want to win, you, you you gotta score. That's my that's no. It's my it's true, but you can score with one striker up top. A lot of teams do it. Barcelona does it. Real Madrid does it. You know they have. Pretty much the best strikers in the world. Yeah, well, the US they do. Have it's that possible. Luxury. There's a lot of teams that play with one striker. That's it's the preferred. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the one striker. Uh, I, yeah, either way. But all right. So other results from the hexagonal and Concacaf yesterday: Jamaica, Mexico, nil nil, and yep. then Costa Rica and Panama, two to two. Two to two. Two to two. So um, Costa Rica came back with that think? one. So it's not an awful day for the USA, especially you have to look at a team like Mexico, who really probably could have lost that game, which would have been outrageous to see USA, Mexico, both on zero yeah. points after the first Going round. Going the next game, Honduras yeah. and Jamaica tied at three points, but they drew. Jamaica had some good chances, and if you're a USA fan watching that game against Mexico on ESPN, even though you couldn't watch your national team, I don't know. Who get called that. the game? Two Mex, two Spanish guys, All right. uh, and they had John Sutcliffe as the field as a who has like reporter. a crazy Spanish accent. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah both, all three of the guys had Spanish accents. Yeah, um, John Jamaica Sutcliffe. looked looked pretty good. If you're a USA fan, you have to be saying the Jamaica games not going to be easy. Already, are we already we lost to Jamaica yeah. in the round before, so Jamaica can play. Went into the Azteca, drew in the Azteca, so the US can't even do that. That's that's tough. Jamaica is going to be pretty tough. Costa Rica and Panama, two to two, but I don't really think either of those teams on the road. Obviously, they'll be tough, but coming to the, coming stateside, I don't think either of those two teams really stand a chance. But I think Jamaica, whether on the road or at home, especially on the road because that field is awful, Jamaica is going to push the USA. So not the worst day of results for the USA because Mexico only picked up a point, and that's really who you're chasing in this group. Yeah. Regardless of their first game performance, but long way to go. My prediction: USA finishes behind Jamaica. Well, wow, that's a bold prediction. Yeah. I mean, looking into this, you thought Jamaica was going to be the team that, not you could beat up on, but the easiest team in the group. Yeah. There's always a team you can beat up on. Yeah. But this time, it seems like you got the best six teams in the Yeah, uh, this is a region. good, this is going to be good. So, yeah, Jamaica on the road, it's going to be tough. But I'm just looking ahead to this next game, which is against Mexico. Mexico is one point. U.S. Yeah. has nothing. Yeah. Is this, this, this one's in, real, the, in the Azteca? This, yeah, this is, this is cool. in Azteca, so. Uh-oh. The U.S. is looking at going 0-2 their first uh, two games. The only good thing watching that game, as it got, the game went uh, deeper and deeper into the game, stayed at 0-0. 
the Mexican fans completely turned on their home team. It was that, ridiculous. The Mexican fans are just they were cheering, so net. They're cheering Jamaica every time they complete passes. It was nuts. It was unbelievable. That's so great. That's got to be the game plan. Keep it tied 0 0. Hope the fans get on them, and then maybe you steal yeah, the goal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the U.S. has never done good in Azteca. No. Nope. Never, ever. I mean, they have that crazy altitude change yep. where it's like over a mile above sea level yep. there. The fans are just tossing batteries onto the field. Yep. Or bags of urine, I've heard. So it's just, you got to get those police guys with the shields yep. that sort of try to protect the U.S. players, but they still can get hit. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yep. It's crazy. Crazy right. environment down in Azteca. And uh, you got to give some props to the American Outlaws who travel all these games. Sticking. Only 30 Jamaican fans in the Stadio Azteca. They had a shot of them. They were all packed together. It was hilarious. They must have been getting bags yeah, of urine they, they and batteries thrown at them, they, too. They, um, they escorted they to, them out yeah. of the stadium. Before the game was over, it was still 0-0. So that kind of is awful if you're a Jamaican fan. Yeah, but. you have to get escorted around. Um, next. You probably get the bus, you know, if, if you park your bus and you're a fan. Yeah. You could probably get the fans, like, trying to push yeah. the bus over, which is funny because the, the fans will be on both sides of yeah. it. And then if it falls, a, a bunch of fans die. Yeah. And then you can't have any more home games because yeah. people will ban it. Just thought of that. Next topic, sticking with soccer, World Cup 2018, moving to Fox 2014. We'll be with ESPN, so cherish your Ian Dark and Steve McManaman while you can. Well, it'll probably be Ian Dark and, like, Taylor Twellman, but the final probably won't involve Twellman, but who you cares? You know who called the last final of the World Cup on ESPN? It was the USA Games were on, on ESPN. Yeah, no, but this, the, the World Cup final, Spain versus Netherlands. It was not Ian Dark. I, it was probably, like, Clyde Tilsley and Andy Gray. It was, uh, no, that's a great team. It was Martin Tyler and Effin Okoku. Okay, that's not bad either. Uh, I'm not a Martin Tyler fan. Everyone like, says this guy's the greatest of all time. I think he's pretty good. Do you like Gus Johnson as the new voice of the World Cup 2018? They're grooming him right now. What do you think? Right now, I'm not a huge fan of it, but maybe I can grow into it. If I if I listen to one of these guys' calls, he's been working as a San Jose Earthquake radio broadcaster, which is different from TV because you don't have to describe as much on television. And also, if he gets a good partner, maybe the partner can carry him. So, but like, I know, I know you're gonna make some points about it that I won't hop on. But uh, I really liked Gus Johnson when he was doing CBS, NFL, and college basketball. But now that he's on Fox, doing some college football, I'm not a huge fan of him. Uh, he used to be everyone's favorite broadcaster. Now, the Fox move really screwed him. I think. Yeah, I, I and part of that's on CBS. Pay the guy his money. He's basically the voice of March Madness. Pay him. Yeah, not whatever your boy Jim Nance is the voice. I think, well, the official voice would be Jim Nance, but everyone out, like the unofficial, everyone thinks March Madness. March Madness, you think Gus Johnson. Everyone, everyone does. You know, the guy lives for it, or he did. Now he doesn't. But World Cup, him moving to soccer, how is he going to handle some of the slower moments of a soccer game? Because he's a high energy guy. All He's a high energy. You give him an opportunity, which means. Anytime there's Any cross. a half chance, anytime there's a shot on goal, this guy's going to lose his mind, which you want excitement in those moments because those are the exciting moments in a game. As awful as that sounds, a shot on goal is an exciting moment in a game. So you don't want him overselling it, which he's going to. You know he's going to oversell stuff yeah, like that. I can that. picture it right now. You I know want, exactly how it'll sound. You want sort of that, and this is why I think the English do it so well, because they know the tempo of the game so well. Is they, it's, a, it's a fluid excitement it's not too much but it's it's kind of relaxed and excited at the same time and i think it just works perfectly he's going to be too you know too excited all the time little things and it ruins it's going to ruin it i think we should give him a chance to see how his brother he's, he's doing he's next doing week, the man. champions league final he's doing the champions league champions league he, uh, round of 16 yeah. we're not going to and then he's and working then, the final on, which uh, is aw that's awful i i'm really upset about that but i'll still watch I don't think I'm going to watch. I usually never do, unless it goes to a PK shootout, which we saw yesterday. Which you did last year, so did you watch last year? Uh, I was probably busy. It's a Saturday afternoon in May. i got to be outside doing oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is in May. i, I got to be doing stuff during the day. I can't be... It's, not, it's at like at 4 o'clock. Mm, yeah, but I was probably doing something more important. Okay. Next topic. All right, so Warehouse. Celtic season, not officially over. But it's pretty much over. Trade Wait, rumors swirling. Five straight since Rondo went out. Five, uh, all right, so five straight. Trade rumors swirling. If you had to pick one guy to trade, be it KG, Pierce, Rondo, any of those, any of these guys will be on this shirt for the 75th yep. year anniversary thing. Who are you trading? Ooh, I think you got to keep Rondo, even though he has the most value. 
And I, I think, oh, this is tough between Pierce and KG. I would say you trade KG, you keep Pierce, let him retire as a Celtic, lifelong Celtic. That'll be pretty cool. KG, you trade. I think you get a little something for him. Obviously, you're not getting the best. If you wanted the best value, you trade Rondo, even even though he's injured. But he's young. Keep him. You got some young pieces, even though Solinger just got hurt. Looks like he's going to be out for the year as well. So the C's are in trouble, even though they won five straight. Probably won't last forever that they're going to win all these games. But if they make the playoffs, that would be nice. But I, I say trade KG. Keep the truth as a lifelong Celtic. Keep Rondo because he's young and pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, it depends who you get where. F originally, I just want Rondo out. But to be a good team in the NBA, you need to have somebody good on your team to build around. Yeah. And then, so unfortunately, Rajon Rondo. Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce, the truth. I want him on the team because I'm a sucker for these lifelong Celtic kind of guys. And, uh, I mean, you'll probably get the most out of him or KG. So I guess I'm going to go with Kevin Garnett here. He can. He's not one of these lifelong Celtic guys. Yeah. And, I mean, you said Sullinger is a guy who's pretty much a, is comparable to Kevin Garnett. But uh, now I'm changing my mind. I'm going Rajon Rondo. Screw it. Okay. I want to trade Rajon Rondo. You're not going to get a lot for this guy because nobody likes playing with him, it seems like. Nobody likes coaching him, it seems like, even though Docker is really the only one that's coached him. And his skill set is pretty much set for the Boston Celtics, I think. So if you can trade him and maybe get another point guard who can actually shoot, yep. I don't see why you can't do that. Rondo having his best shooting year was. Whatever. Okay. Just trade, pointing that trade out. Throwing it out there. Three. All right, final topic of the day, National Signing Day yesterday, Ole Miss. Fifth-ranked recruiting class in the country, number one class, obviously Alabama, obviously. I thought Ole Miss was number one. No, Ole Miss was five, Alabama was one, which we all know how that's going to turn out in about, uh, not. I can't even say three years. We know they're probably going to win a national title next year and the year after that, probably the year after that, maybe the year after that, who knows. But if you're the number one recruit in the country, as we see, number one recruit in the country there in the top left, Robert Nkendiche, Nkendiche went to okay. Ole Miss, brother okay. goes to Ole Miss. How would you announce your school on National Signing Day? I, you got to get creative with it. Yep. And these players are semi-creative when they get the hat set up and you have the three hats. You know, like, uh, I'm going to pick. Okay, but I got I got two ways. And one is if I have two schools, and one is if I've narrowed it down to three schools. So which do you want to hear first? Uh, dealer's choice. G give me a choice. Dealer's choice. All right, Just we're gonna go, we'll Just go with the three school first. Yeah. Give me the three schools, though. I don't know what would your three Just give me three schools. Uh, Florida, Alabama, Georgia. Okay, so if you get three schools, obviously you're at one of these town bars or something. Yeah. You're at your town's favorite restaurant. they got plenty of TVs because probably a sports bar. Program into it, like you get at the stadium, the race between the Florida Gator, the Georgia Bulldog, and the Elephant, Alabama Crimson Tide. Get them on the screen. Play one of those races where one of the, you know you have to guess who yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. And everyone takes a spot in the lead, and then two of them trail, and then... The guy comes back in the first, and then the winner of that, that's the school that you're going to. Everyone turns around if they looked on the screen. You got a hat of whatever team just won that race. Yeah. Say it. Or, yeah, a hat of whatever team just yeah. won that race. So we're going to go two. Yeah. If, if I have two schools, two choices I'm yeah. going with, give me two new schools. Uh, phew, Let's go Ohio State, Michigan. Okay, if it's between the Ohio State and Michigan, you get your mom to bake two cakes. One shaped like the Michigan M. Yeah. The other shaped like the Ohio State That's a State lot of o. work to get the O. No, just to, we can just do a. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all mom, right. mom can bake them. Moms can bake. Mom can frost them. Mom will frost it. So, camera's on you. The interviewer is right there. You have the two cakes in your hand. You get yep. the nice suit on. And all right, so it's time for you to announce what school you're gonna go with. Take the school that you don't want. Throw the cake on the ground. Start eating the cake <laughs> that you're actually going to. I'm gonna go attend the University of Michigan. Right. Start eating the Michigan cake, <laughs> and then. If you don't eat all of it, you can share with the rest of everybody. That's a good what call. What do you think? That's, that's think, two creative ideas that yeah. I don't think anyone's tried before. I don't think anyone's just done either of those. I do have to say I do like uh, Mr. Enkem DJ's move, breaking out the suspenders and bow ties. It's a good look. Had the Letterman jacket over it. My call would be pretty simple. This is at this would be at Hudson High School, where I went to high school. None of you guys here know what I'm going to be talking about for the next five minutes, so you can tune out. All the people in Hudson who are watching, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Morgan Bull, far end zone. So there's woods behind that. The other end zone, there's the path that leads down because the Morgan Bowl is cut into, it's cut into the ground, so you got to come down this trail. So I'm on the far end looking towards that trail, making my announcement. Everyone from Hudson's there because no one from Hudson has ever played Division I football, I don't think. Someone can correct me. D Division I 
uh, bowl subdivision. We do have one alumnus who I talked to last year on my radio show, Carl Surrey, who's at Bryant right now, playing cornerback. Cool. Um, but so I'm, I'm talking the whole town. So we're at the saying, Morgan Bowl. I got my hats. I got the hats lined up. Oklahoma, two other schools I, that I'm not going to pick. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what Can I are. choose the two schools? Yeah. Boston College and Connecticut. Okay, I would have neither of those on there, but we'll go we'll go Oklahoma, Boston College, Connecticut, OU's in the middle. I'm I'm giving my speech, doing my spiel, thanking people that I really don't want to thank. Then the marching band comes down the tunnel. <laughs> the Hudson the marching tunnel. band? The Hudson band comes okay. down the tunnel playing the Oklahoma fight song. Da 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 Da, 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 da. They're playing. I'm going, what's going on here? What's going on? <laughs> no one from Hudson knows the fight song. They're going, what's going on? What's the band doing here? I take the hat, put it on, and then I start singing the fight song. Oklahoma, 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 Oklahoma. And then it keeps going. And then it's Boomer Sooner, Boomer Sooner seven times. I'm Sooner born, I'm Sooner bred, and when I die, I'll be Sooner dead. Rocklahoma, Rocklahoma, Rocklahoma. Okay, you. <laughs> and that's the end of that. That is that's how I would great. choose... That's I thought mine were great. I thought mine were really awesome, but that that's, definitely topped it. That's how I would do it, and then ESPN, you would freak out. You get all those guys back in see, the studio. See, see, you should probably see that. Nah, that's yours, but we should probably start a business for these recruits. Yeah. Give me a creative thing. Because these guys, do. this is on. Well, all these are televised. Televised. This thing, everyone knew the night before. Seven thirty, ESPNU. Robert M. Kim DJ chooses his school. I was asleep for it. I obviously wasn't going to wake up at 7.30 for that. 7.30 a.m.? 7.30 a.m. you got to get Snap. those things in early. got to get your, your letters of intent in early. Great story. Kid chooses his school from Miami, decides to sign for Arkansas. Mom says, no, nah, I don't want you going. Doesn't sign it. You have to get your parents to sign it unless you're over 21. You shouldn't be over 21 when you yeah. graduate high school. No one knows where he's going to school. Pop signed it today. All right. Didn't know that. Yep. So we got to thank Sam Allen, Milka Tolich, Matt Furtado, for helping us out today on the PTR uh, on Pardon the Rick Eruption. Uh, I think I'm all set with things I need to say for this week. Tip your waiters, don't die in the snowstorm. Tip your waiters in this snowstorm for coming to the restaurant that you're at. Tip them extra. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.